Hello everyone and welcome to one of the great tests in Formula One. These are the bright lights of Marina Bay where it is time for the 18th round of the Formula One World Championship in 2024. This is Singapore, our second city-state race of the season as Formula One returns to the original night race venue. This will be the 15th running of the Singapore Grand Prix on a day that feels defining for the destiny of the World Championship. Can Max Verstappen land a knockout blow by winning his first Grand Prix since Spain back in June? Or will the pole man, Lando Norris, convert to his third career win? You saw a graphic of the circuit, a circuit that runs to three miles to 4.9 kilometers, 19 turns, and now four DRS zones for the drivers to employ if they're within a second. The C5, the C4, and the C3 tires are the compounds available tonight. Let's take you to pictures of this magnificent venue, and here is the starting grid. The Salbers are on the back row once again. For the 17th time this year, Valtteri Bottas is the lead car in the head-to-head -head battle. Then it is Pierre Gasly in 18th. He's next to Lance Stroll, who has looked really short on confidence behind the wheel of his Aston Martin. Could this be the last start in Formula One for eight-time Grand Prix winner Daniel Ricciardo? He's going on the attack next to Esteban Ocon. Kevin Magnussen returns to Formula One in 14th, the big shock of Q2. Sergio Perez's exit, he's a winner around here before. The Williams just missed out on Q3, tight margins between Albon and Cola Pinto. Another surprise, Charles Leclerc's time being deleted and Carlos Sainz dropping it on the outlap. He was our winner here last year. Fernando Alonso is seventh, he is next to Yuki Tsunoda, P8 on the grid. Once again in the top 10 for the second year in a row around this circuit. Nico Hülkenberg, his joint best qualifying of the year. He is next to Oscar Piastri. And then it is Mercedes locking out row number two. George Russell is in fourth. Lewis Hamilton delighted with third. And our top two in the World Championship. Reverse them. That's our order. Max Verstappen on the front row for the second time in just seven races. And you know the stat that is coming your way. Lando Norris will be desperate to lead at the end of lap one. And the Singapore Grand Prix is underway. Good reaction time for Lando Norris, who will hold the lead down to the 90 metres to turn number one. Good start for Lewis Hamilton, but Max Verstappen edged him out as Piastri tries to dive to the inside, and he takes back that place that he lost off the line. There was a good launch from Norris this time. Verstappen couldn't get the, the traction down. And look at Hamilton, has the better start of the top three. It's not enough, but he tries to go racing with Verstappen momentarily on the outside, cannot make it through. Russell and Piastri were very, very close as well. As you see Oscar get that place back down in the braking zone. Albon's got an issue. Yeah, yeah. we go on board with Alex Albon, who wasn't happy at the start of the Grand Prix. A drop back from where he had a chance to contend for points, and now it looks like it's going to be another difficult day for the Thai driver. Uh, front wing damage, maybe. Maybe front wing damage. Well, it's been a dream Grand Prix so far for Lando Norris, but you're still pushing all the way here and on an old tyre that's not in perfect condition. Here we go, key moment on board with Lando Norris. This could have changed the outcome of our winner today. Lock up and he brushes the barrier. That was so close to the end of his Grand Prix. High pressure pit stop for McLaren. They're trying to tick off the things that might deny them victory because the pace of the car with the driver that you're looking at has been superb. That is laid on the brakes, so a position change for Max Verstappen. He moves past Charles Leclerc. Forcing Piastri around the outside in the brakes. He does go around the outside. That fresher rubber put to brilliant use and Oscar Piastri clears the Mercedes. Alonso soaring left, soaring right, but Charles Leclerc moves on by. And he's really close. Will he be forced to go the long way round again? He is, but he pulls it off once more. Russell hung in there, but Piastri gets past the second Mercedes, up to third position. There wasn't much room for his front wing as they ran side by side through the apex. Beautifully judged overtake. This is on ball with Daniel Ricciardo and Esteban Ocon elbows his way by. So does Magnussen. Norris, oh, did he tap the wall? Was that a, a Russell moment? Remember, Norris did this on the final. Oh, oh my yes. word. Here's Charles Leclerc, we're on board. We were, as the Ferrari driver goes through and up to fifth position. So this is the 
replay will this be the moment where brushes out well if that was the moment it was the tiniest of touches well you think how lucky so many other drivers have been because yep. k mag is not the only driver let's see is this russell brushing the wall oh, i'll tell you what it's, it's a sloppy one from george just exiting trying to get that steering wheel straight coax the rear tires back and and there is uh, kevin magnuson who finds himself uh, being pushed out of the grand prix Lando Norris can stop hearing about his starts and start enjoying his finishes for the third time in Formula One. Lando Norris takes the checkered flag, a dominant drive complete. And over the line comes Max Verstappen to claim second position. And Piastri will claim his seventh podium finish of the season across the line. 1-3 for McLaren. A third Grand Prix victory in Formula One for Lando Norris, who beats Max Verstappen by just under 21 seconds. Oscar Piastri completes the podium. George Russell had an entertaining battle and beat Charles Leclerc to fourth place. It means in the Drivers' Championship, the gap has come down between Verstappen and Norris to 52 points as McLaren extend their lead in the Constructors' Championship. Just, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was just, um, I started catching a few of the back markers and a bit of a gust of wind, I've hit a bump a little bit wrong and it's really caught me out uh, quite weirdly, so yeah, I mean, I took it much easier in the second stint, I didn't need to push anymore, so the car was good, the car was great in the first half, but I mean, I feel like it's also a track where you have to manage the tyres well, you have to not make mistakes, it's kind of a, it's a track who, who can push it up to the walls more consistently and more often, and I feel like that's what I did today, so... Um, it's been an amazing weekend, so very, very happy to end it off like this. Quite quickly, almost, I realized that yeah, it was not possible um, to follow, and I just tried to do my own race and yeah, just uh, keep keep my momentum going. Even though, of course, it was not the same pace as uh, as Lando. First in was a bit difficult. I had a lot of rear decks, a lot of sliding, um, and uh, yeah. Uh, I think that just cost me a lot of lap time. And then the second stint was a little bit more competitive. Uh, it's still not, of course, where we want to be, but I think overall, um, yeah, it was, it was a bit more promising. But uh, we still need to figure out, of course, the base pace, the long run pace a bit more. Um, we know that, of course, this track is not ideal for us, but I think even on a normal track at this stage, uh, we, we still can't find, find them. You know, after qualifying, that was, was the most we could have hoped for. And um, yeah. Nice, nice damage limitation. You know, it's always nice to to, to end up on the podium, and uh, yeah, nice hole of points for for the team. You know, it's a, a really successful night, uh, especially compared to you know, our main championship rivals. So um, glad I could be a part of it. Yesterday, I arrived here very angry because of the tyres. Looking back at it, yes, the tyres were not exactly in the right window, but uh, this happens very often in qualifying. And I think the main issue was me locking up into turn one and going wide and having track limits and a bad lap and everything. So, yeah, with hindsight, I think I was probably the one to blame yesterday and it happened. So there will be qualifying that we do well and qualifying is where you do a mistake, especially when you have only one lap and, and then you pay the price. The only problem is that to uh, not do a lap in Q3 here in Singapore is probably the track where you pay the price the most. But, but again, if I look only today, I feel like we've done a really, really, really good job. Yeah, a lot of a lot of emotions because um, look, I'm aware it could it could be it, and yeah, I think it's also just exhausted after the race. So there's so much I don't know, just like a a flood of many emotions and feelings and exhaustion and um, yeah, the the cockpit is something that. Um, I got uh, very, very used to for many years, um, and yeah, just uh, um, just wanted to savor the, savor the moment.